Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here with my daily video. So I've made some progress, yes, on the garden path that is up on the wall. There we go, up, up, up. So I've just layered it over top of the heart quilt from my holiday book because I didn't feel like taking the heart quilt down. So I started walking, working on it a little bit later in the evening to get the rows sewn. So I have three, three rows sewn. Here is the, here's the pattern. So I showed you the other day that I had the blocks, the units. I had these, er, I had these units ready, but I had not made them, put the four together for the blocks or done any of the rows. So now here's where I'm at. Three rows are done. Have to sew them together. I have made the rest of the blocks almost, almost. And I put them by the number because I've got three different blocks for the quilt to make it easier. Like you could make it more scrappy, but it's a, this is a little bit more controlled. So I just did them in sections. So I have all, all of these, all of these sewn up. And then I found out that there were duplicates of one of the units, not this one, but one of the other ones, there was two, two extra. And I'm like, Hmm, I made two extra. Okay. So I put them in my bin up here that has all the extras in it. That one up there. And then I went merrily along and then found out the last grouping. I was missing two, <laughs> so I had, I had, there should have been two more that look like this. And what I found is I only had the squares. I didn't have the extra parts to, you know, the red and the, the white. So now I do, now I do. I cut them <clears throat> and I have to sew those. Then I can get the last two big blocks done. The last two rows could get done. I definitely think I'm going to put a border on this. I'm still debating my niece that, that just got married. I'm still debating on what to give her. And I'm thinking, well, maybe this would be good because she was married in May and is very summery. But if I put a border on it, I think I will do, uh, I think I would do this one, the nice, deep, rich border and put maybe a light blue or maybe the stripe. Maybe put the stripe as a inner border and then the blue and then probably just maybe just bind it in the blue as well. Who knows? Who knows? I have to figure that out, but I want to give this one away. So uh, that is, that is my uh, status. Okay. I had a little binding craziness, or maybe it would be like an epiphany. Maybe that would be more of the right term. So I made, I made binding. Ta-da! I made binding. Isn't that cute? Stripe binding. I always like to look at stripe binding. I made the stripe binding and then discovered I had already made the stripe binding. I opened the drawer. Here's a picture. I opened the drawer of my unit that's over here, this uh, credenza. The, one of the drawers in the credenza are all these nice little boxes, different ones that I've collected that fit, in, fit them in there. Like, And inside them are Bind, extra binding. Like whenever there's extra binding, I was just keeping it. So I, I have a whole freaking drawer of them. Like, do I, and, and I don't, then I didn't even look. I made more binding. I didn't even look in the drawer. That is not effective. <laughs> That's like, I'm taking time and fabric to make something I already made. Okay. So what do I do about this? Hmm. Well, I'm thinking what I do is look at the quilts that I have left to put some binding on. Many of them will get the scrappy binding out of here. I'm just going to find something in there that works. If it's like blue and there's not enough blues, I'll just sew them together and make it kind of scrappy and I will bind the quilts with that. And then I'm going to take that drawer and, and make just one container for future binding and just we have binding for things I'm actually going to sew. But the extras, the extra parts, I will put in the cart, like here. Here was a piece of binding that was from one of the projects. And this now can go into this, the string for the string making in the rolling assistant. So I will take all the extras out of that drawer. So that'll be a project to do this summer. I will get, get all of those I do want to, I don't know how many I have left to do binding on. 
it's not that many. So I'm thinking that it's time to get those done. Always something, always something. Every time I turn around, there's another little thing because the drawer is not being used effectively. I do not need a whole drawer of binding, leftover binding. That just like the batting thing yesterday. I, 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 I'm not using it. I rarely even make scrappy binding, rarely. So why did I decide to keep it? I think I had this, you know, great grand plan that it would look really cute to keep it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have a new plan and that's not what's going to be in there anymore because it will just be easier to have something I'm working on like as a project drawer, something I want to get in, will get into all the time and, and use effectively. I need my spaces to be used effectively. Like if it's in this room, it has to be things that I'm getting into and using all the time. And along the line of those strips, I got two more crumb blocks finished. And these are sort of the mishmash ones, which are not my favorite, but I kind of came up with a thought on how to make these work into something. I'm probably gonna end up making half square triangles with them so that they will all become a half square triangle. And then the other fabric will be something, whatever it is. So I will either do it that way or I will sash them pretty wide with some other fabric that kind of pulls everything together like as one some solid so then it will see a lot of that other color and these will just be like little sparkling accents <laughs> that's my plan anyway that's <laughs> sparkling accents i don't know where do i come up with that here's one in progress remember i showed you this that had these squares so I was sewing these, all of these units. I needed to sew something between to start and finish. And that's how the crumb blocks got finished up. I have two other squares and then I'm going to just do strings for a while. I'm gonna get rid of, not do these squares after these other two are done. So that is my plan for those. <laughs> okay, now, now I had a little stitch, a uh, cross stitch mishap. <laughs> I am not good at keeping track of the numbers sometimes. And if I'm not totally paying attention, uh, sometimes things get a little, a little out of whack. So let me just show you what I did down here and it's going to work out. So she says, <laughs> okay, on this makers, monthly makers, there is this wonderful, wonderful border. I love the border. It feels very sparkly and happy, but there's little peaks and valleys. See these little peaks and valleys here and the little dots, like here's the other one, little peaks and valleys with the little yellow dots. There we go. Well, do you see over here? There's just two little yellow little uh, dots. There's supposed to be like four. There's supposed to be another peak and valley in here. Like it was, the green was supposed to go down and up one more, like one more, one more valley. But I just went across and this blue goes over here. So what I need to do is when I open this up to do this next, next section across, I will have to draft in an extra peak and valley very soon somewhere. So there'll be a, either another one next to those red sections, like another one next to the red sections, or another one next to a blue, the next blue section for the peak and valley with the yellow dots. It's not a horrible uh, problem, but I'm glad I finally not I noticed it, <laughs> but I didn't want to unpick it. I was like, nah, I can just make an extra peak and valley and add it somewhere because it's a very, it's more flowing. It's not super symmetrical or at least it's not going to be when I'm done, even, <laughs> even if it is now, it's not going to be later. No. So we have some upcoming sew alongs where the kits came in or patterns are in. So I'm gonna show you the pictures. The bloom kits, the fabric is there. So if you like the little bloom, you can get the pattern and then you can just pick up some of the fabric so that you can do it in similar fabrics or just do it in your, in your scraps. It will be so fun. Then we have the spooky sampler and the kit is available. Uh, there's a backing available and I picked the backing to go with this kit. Uh, there are single patterns. So if you wanna use your own stash and just pull like, you know, get a background to go with it. 
this one is going to be super fun. There's a little bit of applique in it, but when we hit the applique ones, I will probably give you a suggestion of what you could do. But the applique is so cute, like the bats, you know, you gotta add the bats. And the winter wonder, the woodland, wonderful. Woodland, wonderful. <laughs> this one. <laughs> It, the pattern is in. Now there is a custom kit that uh, is different fabrics than on the cover. And that's what I'm showing you here. The cover is red and green. Some of you have told me that you have the kit from way back when the original kit was out and you didn't do it yet. So this will be perfect. You can sew along. And that one will be a little bit later. Then from my book, we will do a, we will do a sampler. We will do a happy everything sampler using uh, blocks from my holiday book and I have to design all that. All of these things I need to now get some solid dates over the next few days. I will work on that. Well, probably not this. We'll probably, probably maybe next week sometime I will get dates. But you want to get your stuff in. They will all, they will be starting somewhere uh, in August or uh, some might be September. But you can be all prepared. You can have everything ready to go. <laughs> super fun, super fun. Even like that bloom, if you wanted the basket of bloom, if you wanted to do it in fall colors, it would be cute in Christmas. Oh, wouldn't that be darling? It'd be so cute. Now we are getting close to uh, decorating here, here at the, uh, <laughs> at the Sloan residence, <laughs> the Royal We me uh, is getting close to looking at putting up my my red white and blue things and I haven't done it yet just because I was pulling quilts for documenting them and so it's a bit of a mess in my dining room but actually they're just stacked and stacked for me to be doing photography and and documenting them uh, but I want to get some holiday stuff up so first let me tell you that the, a couple of you wanted to see the bunting again that I showed the other day. So there's still bunting available. So here it is, super cute. It is stars with the stripes on the bottom. I had lots of suggestions for just doing some gathering along the stars so I could hang it up. You could also use it as a table runner because it's finished on both ends like this. Uh, so all you have to do is finish the end, you do placemats, you go pillows. It's fabulous. So fun. You could just wear it. <laughs> as your holiday, as your red, white, and blue outfit. I also had gotten two panels for Christmas, for, for, for um, holiday, 4th of July, summer, summer panels with flags. This one is really, really neat. Look at this, ta-da! It's like a big windmill, you know, like, yeah, that. <laughs> and this one here, comes also with a red background, but I like the white because I felt like it popped and it has bunting on the top. There we go, the America, America the Beautiful panel. Now there is also a kit, and I'll put a picture up here, there's a kit, and it has the panel plus uh, in the kit enough fabric to do and directions to do a table runner. So that is pretty nifty. And if you had not seen this book yet, The American Liberty by yeah, American, oh, American Gathering, I'm sorry, American Gathering by my buddy Lisa Bonjean. She put this out. It has lots and lots of flag patterns. Here is my favorite in the whole book with strings. One of these very traditional string quilts done in the red, white, and blue. Uh, she has flags. That one's, that one's really neat with the star. There's table runners and other pillows. There's, look, look how cute that is. If you want to just do a few little hexes, this is darling. I like how the background's quilted on it too. That sort of honeycomb or, you know, crossways. So there's a bunch of darling projects in here. And here's just some basics. And it's with one of her fabric lines. So I'll link you up below so you can get the book. And if you like the fabrics, she, her fabric line, it's just darling. It's so nice, it's so Americana. All right, my friend, if you are working on a project, work on it today. I love you. Mwah. See you online.